Did you know that deep under the city streets of Chicago lies one of the world's largest and most daring underground projects? This project involves the construction of several subsurface tunnels that run for over 100 miles, and it's called the Tunnel and Reservoir Plan, or TARP for short. But why is this large underground project being built and what purpose will it serve the people of Chicago? Keep watching this video to find out what you need to know. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, Chicago's TARP, or Deep Tunnel Project, as it's popularly called, spans more than 100 miles and is designed to hold billions of gallons of liquid. But as ambitious as this 100-mile project is, just hearing of it might make you feel it's something that kicked off recently. But you'd be surprised to hear the construction has been happening since 1972, more than 50 years in the making. But you're probably not the first person hearing about this project for the first time. Many Chicago residents aren't even aware that such a project exists, and they walk above it practically every day. But what's the real reason for running a 100-mile underground tunnel across Chicago's streets? Let's find out. The birth of the deep tunnel idea, addressing a century-old problem. As the mid-20th century came around, Chicago was hit with major environmental issues that threatened not just residents, but also businesses and infrastructure within the city. This was largely due to Chicago's combined sewer system, which had become outdated at the time. This was not the case with more modernized cities, which had separate drains for water and sewage. In Chicago's case, the combined drainage system carried both sewage and stormwater in the same pipes. This was not ideal, as heavy rainfalls meant that the pipes were overloaded with sheer volume of sewage and stormwater. Thanks to this, the water flowing within the pipes was polluted. Even worse, the polluted water was being channeled directly into the Chicago River. Sadly, this led to the pollution of Lake Michigan, which happens to be Chicago's major source of water. To add to that, sewer backups emerged as a problem for residents of the city as it filled their basements with contaminated water that, of course, had foul smells and post health risks. Thankfully, the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago decided to take action, and this led to the creation of the Tunnel and Reservoir Plan, or TARP. The aim of this project was spelled out, to construct an underground network of tunnels so large that it would capture both sewage and overflow of stormwater, store it temporarily, then redistribute the water back to the treatment plants after storms passed. Simply put, the tarp was created to effectively tackle both flooding and the overall quality of the water flowing within the city. To Chicago's credit, this set a new standard for how urban water issues can be managed. Once the idea for tarp had been birthed and the objectives had been clearly defined, it was time to bring this idea to reality. The construction process, digging deep. It's worth mentioning that the deep tunnel system isn't just your average underground pipe network. Would you believe that the engineers in charge of this project had to excavate bedrock that lay between 150 to 300 feet below ground level to create space for the massive tunnels? That is insane. Speaking of the tunnels, they have diameters that range between 9 and 33 feet. But just so you know how wide they are, each tunnel is big enough to fit a semi-truck, even a subway car. But getting this done was not an easy task, as specialized boring machinery was used to break through layers of rock. As you'd expect, such a task carries potential risks, which is why the construction teams had to carefully manage all risks involved, including air quality, flooding, and especially collapses. Of course, this isn't the kind of project that could be finished overnight. This is why the construction process was split into different phases, with each phase focusing on different portions of the tunnel network. I've already mentioned that this project kicked off in 1972, and it's worth mentioning that the first operational section was completed in 1985. The good news is the first milestone helped to reduce sewer backups and flooding significantly. But even with this success, the deep tunnel project was still a ways off. However, the system continued to expand over the next couple of decades. More tunnels were added to cover the metropolitan area and more reservoirs were built to increase its capacity. Now, I gotta mention that one of the project's most applaudable components is the McCook Reservoir. This is a massive storage facility that was built to collect and store stormwater during even the heaviest of storms. This reservoir has been under construction in several phases, and the first section was fully operational in 2017. It's expected that all phases will be ready by 2029, and by then the system will be able to hold as much as 10 billion gallons of water. This amount of collected water can fill thousands of Olympic-sized swimming pools. That being said, just how much coverage does the Deep Tunnel Project have, really? Let's find out. Coverage of the Deep Tunnel Network Without a doubt, TARP is truly a massive project. I've already mentioned that its tunnels span over 100 miles and are spread across the entire city of Chicago. In fact, the tunnels also cut across some of Chicago's surrounding suburbs, and it covers most of northern Illinois. 
Now, if you think these 300 feet deep tunnels are a joke, then maybe you gotta rethink whether you compare them to skyscrapers. Yes, the tunnels go so deep that their depths are greater than the heights of most skyscrapers in the world. With such depth, it's easy for the system to connect with nearby reservoirs and treatment plants, which ensures the smooth flow of both flood water and sewage. But it's not just the depth that's amazing, because each of these massive tunnels can store billions of gallons of water with relative ease. Now, when you combine this with the capacities of reservoirs like McCook and Thornton, the entire system can hold more than 20 billion gallons of stormwater and wastewater when fully functional. You know what this means? It means TARP can manage even the harshest weather events without putting stress on the city's sewers. Now, you might think that the need for such overflow management will never arise, but going by Chicago's history of flooding and its effects, then you might want to give it another look. But for clarity's sake, let's talk in detail about just how great the impact of flooding has been on Chicago. The impact of flooding and water quality. Now, I already mentioned how Chicago suffered the harsh effects of major floodings and sewer overflows, but just how bad was it? Before TARP, the city's outdated combined sewer systems was always overflowing. This caused untreated sewage into the Chicago River and even Lake Michigan. This didn't just pollute the environment, it also caused a public health risk. Thanks to the pollution caused by overflows, there were many recorded cases of typhoid and cholera, thanks to the ingestion and exposure to contaminated water. But besides its negative effect on human health, the overflows also had a major economic impact. The floods caused structural damage to thousands of homes and even businesses. This meant that millions of dollars had to be spent on fixing these damages. But thanks to TARP, the occurrence of such unwanted incidents has reduced significantly. The deep tunnel system is designed to intercept and collect stormwater during heavy rains, which stops the water from reaching the river or flowing into people's houses. Thanks to this crucial innovation, Chicago's rivers and waterways are far cleaner and safer now. In fact, because of the improved water quality, riverfront parks and recreation centers now have been built. Now, more Chicago residents have started to engage with Chicago's waterways. But even though the deep tunnel project has made significant strides, it hasn't eliminated the flooding completely. This is most obvious during the event of a record-breaking storm. However, the fact remains that the project has helped to significantly alleviate the pain of the people who have had to deal with these water problems for decades. The project is still ongoing and is expected to keep solving overflow problems along the way. Unfortunately, the project has faced major challenges that have slowed down its completion. Let's talk about some of these challenges. Challenges and delays. Despite its benefit, the Deep Tunnel Project has not been without its share of challenges. The first that comes to mind is digging miles of tunnels through solid bedrock, which is a slow and expensive process. Each phase of the project required significant planning, funding, and labor. The total cost of TARP has now reached close to $4 billion, making it one of the most expensive infrastructure projects in America. This timeline for completion has also been a point of worry. Originally, TARP was expected to be done much sooner, but unforeseen engineering difficulties, changes in project scope, and delays in funding have extended the timeline significantly. The McCook Reservoir, for instance, will take over 50 years to fully complete by the time its last phase is finished in 2029. There is also the critics to deal with, as they have pointed out that while the tunnel system provides essential flood control, it can't handle every extreme weather event. Chicago's climate is changing, with storms becoming more intense and unpredictable. Some have argued that additional strategies like green infrastructure solutions like rain gardens and permeable pavements should be implemented alongside TARP to provide even more protection against flooding. The future of TARP and water management. Even as TARP nears completion, Chicago is searching for ways to further improve its water management systems. Climate change presents new challenges, with weather patterns becoming less predictable and rainstorms becoming more severe. Thankfully, city planners are working to incorporate new technologies and green infrastructure methods to complement the deep tunnel system. In case you didn't know, green infrastructure involves techniques like building rain gardens, installing permeable pavement, and using rooftop gardens to absorb rainfall before it can enter the sewer system. These methods can cut down the burden on tarp during heavy storms and help create a more sustainable urban environment. Another focus for the future is community education and enlightenment. Many residents are still unaware of the important role TARP plays in protecting their homes and improving the city's waterways. But by promoting awareness and encouraging residents to conserve water, Chicago hopes to extend the life of its infrastructure and continue improving water quality. The tunnel and reservoir plant is a hidden marvel beneath the streets of Chicago, quietly working to protect the city from floods and pollution. With over 100 miles of tunnels, several reservoirs, and the ability to contain more than 20 billion gallons of water, 
Tars become one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in the world. The project shows just how serious Chicago is about tackling environmental issues head on and improving the quality of life for its residents. And even though it's taken decades to finish, the deep tunnel system is already making a significant impact on Chicago's waterways. The city now has cleaner rivers, better flood protection, and fewer sewer backups. Hopefully, the project will be 100% completed sooner than later. And while we can't say exactly when, it's eventually going to happen as long as work is still ongoing. Now, head to the comments down there below and tell us what you think about Chicago's Hidden Tunnel project. We're committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more visionary builds.